hour door to door, but it was about an hour drive. How about for you? Were you uh Cherry Hill, New Jersey? So yeah, you're a little further, but yeah, a little farther away. You were closer to my uncle Ralph, who was um had a beautiful shore house. He owned a company called World Plastics in Wayne, New Jersey, and then he bought a house in Bayville, New Jersey by Seaside Heights area. So um we used to go down there and enjoy all his toys from his uh business success. There you go. Yes, indeed. Well, welcome everybody to the Builders Call. Good afternoon, you uh, uh, hard chargers coming on to get an investment and a deposit so that you can build. And we're excited today for uh, our guest and uh, excited to dive in with the one and only Nate Offert. So um, Nate, you can go ahead and unveil. You veiled on me. I, I saw that. You wanted the big reveal. You want me to do the... No, no, no. I, know. I just didn't want to, you know, see anyone had a little bit of flossing I had to do right before, you know, something. You know, <laughs> um, I didn't think anyone wanted to see me do my, my little floss move right there. So that's right. That's right. No, really thankful for your investment, man. I think as, as far as trainers go, I don't know any better trainer than Nate Offert. And I'm glad that you're on here and uh, you set such a great bar of not only just knowing how to uh, communicate and connect with people, but certainly just all the depth that you bring and all of the uh, the insights and just on the spot insights that really transform people. So really grateful for, for you to be on. And so um, what I'm going to do, Nate, is um, just have you jump in. I think today your topic is something about uh, setting your warm market on fire. Is that what we're looking at? That was your great title you came up with. So you get credit. I think it was lighting your warm market on fire. Either way, we're going to talk about warm market. Um, it's, you know, it's basically the, my, my, without basically my entire team, anyone I personally recruited is all warm market. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I know yeah. the best. Um, I've done cold market. Last time I really did cold market though, personally was when I used to run those ads in the newspaper back in the day where four lines high, big, bold letters, you know, and cost you four or $500 an ad. And so um, other than that, you know, um, I'm excited to be here, Brian. I'd love to kind of inter interact with you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm staying on. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. what Nate, senior vice president, unless you've been promoted, I don't know about it, but 120, no. you've been around Symmetry Nation for how long now, sir? Seven years. Seven years. Seven years. And um, all right. So what was uh, what was your journey to 120 like? What was your what was your time frame? And um, not that again, not that time frames everything, but I'm 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 interested to hear about your uh, your time frame and your journey to 120. But honestly, talking to you in the last couple of weeks here and you and I chat off and on, um, I feel like right now you're just starting <laughs> to be, it's like the the, the sense I'm getting from you is the results that you're able to see right now and what you're building is like, you've created a new starting place at your 120 level and says, look, um, it's game on. And we've been talking about that on the national calls every week. Uh, every time your name pops up is like Brandon and Casey have been um, saying, man, game on for Nate Offert. So anyway, give us a little bit of your journey to 120 well, and then 120 and beyond before we get into your topic. Yeah, well, I mean, to, to, to your point, if you guys don't already know this, I think most people know this. I've seen this happen multiple times with different companies and different industries. And there's a point they get to where that groundwork has been laid, the foundation has been built, and they go on a three to five year tear where people go from making 10 grand a month to hundred grand a month or go from hundred grand a month to a million a month, right? And obviously all results vary based upon what you do. However, there are people making those types of incomes with Symmetry Financial Group in the hundreds of thousands of dollars in a month, which is insane. Mm -hmm. So I look at it and, there, and there's, there's like a window and it goes through that explosive growth stage before it plateaus. I'm not saying plateau and a plateau, it continues to go, but there's like a window. You look back at any company where all the people that got ridiculously wealthy, right? In terms of income, rode that wave, but they didn't ride the wave on the sideline. They rode the wave on their surfboard, right? They, they recognized the wave. They paddled as hard as they could and they lift up their head three to five years later. And I mean, their, their kids, 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 lives are, are, are changed forever. And that's where symmetry is with the technology that they're bringing in, everything they have, they're at that point where it's going to, I mean, the next three to five years, we won't even know what symmetry even looked like. We're going to be like mortgage protection, drive around to people's houses. What? Yo, huh? remember it back in the day? You know, we had to go out and get an application and drive to their house. And we had to get it filled out. And if we forgot something, we had to drive back to their house. And then we had to get it re-signed and dated. And then we had to fax it into our upline. They had to fax it to the carrier. And then they would send a smoke signal when they got it. So we could Morse code them back that, you know, hey, you got the fax, you know. And then we have a policy that had to get issued. And that policy had to get issued. And then we had to deliver it, Brian, to the home of the person before we got paid. 
So if you're brand new in this industry, the growth that we had when our team went from 1 million to 2 million to 4 million to 8 million, my first four years and hit equity partner three and a half years in. And, you know, I hit the top spot. Marlon hit it four months later. Talk about a testament. I had 20 years experience doing sales, building teams. Marlon was homeless and had nowhere to live. That's a testament of symmetry. Two polar opposite people within three to four months hit the same level in the company. Right. So I look at that and I go one, two, four you know, four, 8 million. And that growth was phenomenal in my eyes at back then. But I look at that, I could do that in the next year and a half. <laughs> we have nothing, we have nothing tying our hands. When we, we, we recruited 60 between Marlon and I, we got 69 agents. So some of the things I'm going to show you within our first 60 days, 69 agents who were unlicensed to get them that licensed all through warm market. Mm. The challenge was a lot of that blew up in our face due to the fact that there was something called leads that were specific to a County and you had to drive to their home. So there was a lot of people, or they had to wait six to eight weeks before they got a lead. Oh, we're not mailing because they were young, back, younger back, right? We're, we're not mailing to California. It's going to take six to eight weeks. Well, how well are you going to do to survive in your family six to eight weeks with no money in your pocket? How excited are you going to be, right? Mm-hmm. And so that that we, we took that momentum and whatever we had left of the people that stuck, were able to stick it out and had that uh, intestinal fortitude to keep going. And we drove that to hit over a million our first year. So that's kind of the journey. Um, yeah. and I can't take credit for that because as I'm going to talk about it, you know, in the beginning, I was nothing more than a, a overpaid Uber driver. I always said, you know, I was calling Marlon. I was, I mean, I'm sorry, I was calling Matt. I was calling Brad. I was calling Edward Pritchett. What product do I write? And I was just going to people's homes. They tell me what product to write. I'd be pulling out the script that Symmetry had. I'd be listening to audios on the way over of Casey and what to say in the home, yeah. you know, and as I was recruiting people, I just dumped them over my shoulder. Hey, Matt, Brad, here you go. Work with them. Let me focus on learning this business. Let me for, look, get good at on the phone and, and, and in the home and getting people to show up. And let the upline do the work, do the heavy lifting in the beginning. And I think that's why a lot of people, I'll just kind of slide right into the topic. They miss the boat in the beginning because they go, I want to go out there, Brian. I want to get my feet wet first. Yeah. Well, let me just make sense. I want to to learn how to do this first before I train anybody. Yeah. Let let me say one thing and then I'm going to, I'm going to let you loose. Uh, Well, two things I want to, I want to define warm and cold market. Maybe you're going to do that, but just in case, just in case, I know we got builders on this call, but real quick, we, we believe exactly what you said, which is that 70% of our learning comes from doing exactly what you did, which is like, I'm going to go in the home and figure this out. I'm going to call on the road. I'm going to dive in. And only about 10% comes from what we're going to do right now, which is information, just teaching you. Actually, today is even more inspiration and just really getting you to level up your mindset around uh, around warm market recruiting. Because some people, uh, maybe their mindset isn't on fire for what they can offer, you know, see happen in their warm market. By the way, that's where Brandon and KCR, they're, they're leveling up their mindset. They're at an insure tech conference uh, this week. So really, really great stuff happening there. And uh, we all need to do that. So um, Nate, real quick. So warm market, we're talking about people that uh, I, I like live in Florida. Florida. Warm market, people live in Florida, cold <laughs> markets, yeah, Alaska, right? That's uh, right. So, so yeah, if you're warm market, obviously, I don't know, are you going to cover this one? Or you want me to I, I want you that. No, I'm going to hand it over to you, but I do want, okay. I think it'd be good just to give me, give me the first principles, warm market, cold market, and boom, you're off to the races. Yeah, warm market, people that you know. Cold market, people that you don't know, right? Warm markets broken up. I always say you have your hot market or your burnt market. Those are the people that are closest to you. Maybe you've got another opportunities and you burn them or they know you for who you are. So they're not going to listen to a word you say, right? All of a sudden now you're an insurance expert and I'm going to go out and build a dynasty, an incredible company. They look at you like your mom and dad are like, I wiped your butt when you're little, Brian. Okay. So you probably aren't going to have any type of influence over them or, or respect in terms of this business. And so burnt market is a lot of times people um, I call or your hot market, people closest to you. Then you have your warm market, anyone that you know, and then you have a lukewarm market. You know, maybe you go to church, you know, someone, you shake their hand, you say, hi, you never went out with them. You never hung out with them. You don't have phone calls, interactions. You're not working with them on social media, but you have a, a, your kids play soccer together. Does that make sense? Or my, my son's basketball team where I sit next to the mother and father, I know who they are. I walk into a coffee shop and I see the same server there all the time. So you have your, your hot or burnt warm market, you have your warm market, then you have your lukewarm market. So, you know, there, there's different ways to approach them a lot of times when you're doing that. But, you know, the, the key factor, anytime people make the mistake, I want to get my feet wet, right? And I want to learn this before I go out and train. And logically, that makes sense. The challenge with that is you'll lose most of your warm market if you go out there. Let's just say I get involved in the business, Brian, and me and you are coworkers, right? And you know me for who we are. Birds of a feather flock together. I'm making 70 grand a year. You're making 70 grand a year. I get involved in this company and I blow it out of the water and I make like whatever it is. I, I make half of our salary in three months. I come back to you. I go, Brian, man, this thing right here, this is the, look at this. This is the most amazing thing. Subconsciously, you're not going to tell me, but most likely you're not going to get started because your fear in your head is, Hey, what if I don't do as well as Nate? Then I'm going to be a mirror to your failure. 
and people don't see that. Or what if I go out and fail? Well, now you're gonna be like, well, pff, I, he didn't do it. Why, why, why do I want to try to do it? And that's the silliest thing when people say, oh, I want to go out and, you know, let me see how you do first. Don't buy that one. I mean, I, you play golf, Brian. Can you imagine we all play golf? Ziller, me, and Brandon, you know, and I'm sitting in the cart and Ziller tees off, goes right down the middle, you know. Brandon tees off right down the middle. You tee off, it goes in the woods, whatever, right? And they're like, it's your shot, Nate. Oh, no, I'm good. What do you mean you're good? Well, I'm just going to ride around the cart for 18 holes and see how you guys do first. That would have to single-handedly be the dumbest thing I could ever say, wouldn't it? Like, what does my golf game have to do with your golf game? But people think that way. So the first thing I do is get the spotlight off of you and get it onto your upline. There's always three stories that you have in this business. You have your upline story slash company story, which all of you have an upline that has an incredible story. And if your immediate upline is not the one, go up one more, go up one more, right? Or you can use sideline stories of other people that are involved in the business, right? If I need a bartender, I'm telling Jacob Pogue's story. He's slinging drinks seven years ago. And now he's at the top of the company. I mean, wealth generational change in a matter of seven years. I'm going to be relatable and find those stories in the company. So I was always taught facts, tell, stories, sell. Facts, tell, stories, sell. Everyone wants to sit down and draw the marketing plan out and the compensation, the levels of leadership and the slingshot. That, that's not what gets them involved. How much money you can make. Stories, sell. So you got to collect as many stories when you're on these conference calls. It's like when I'm writing, I have notebooks and notebooks and notebooks of stories of people that have gotten involved in symmetry, what their background was and where they're at today. So I can relate to that more market, so to speak, on their story. So I have my upline story. I'm going to write that down, right? Then you have your story, okay? And then you have your people story. I always ask, which one do you think makes the most money? I'll ask you, Brian, which one do you think makes the most money out of those three stories? What makes you the most money? Uh, I would say my story. Okay. Um, but and that's, and that's right. And then your people's story, and that's right. And your upline story, it depends on what part of the business that you're in. When you're brand new, your upline story is going to make you the most amount of money because you don't got one. Does that make sense? When you have your story, your story is not so you go out and recruit all your friends and family. Your story is creating it so that your organization, your agency has a story to tell about you to bring that respect level in. That's a mistake people make too. Don't think you go out there and make a hundred grand in this business in six months and then all your friends are going to flock over to you and go, oh my gosh, Nate Aubrey made a hundred grand. It's actually harder. It's easier to get people involved when you haven't done anything yet because they can't look at your results. They can't judge your results. And then as you get up and running, the biggest amount of money you're going to earn is your people's story because that's what brings you value. <clears throat> so when I can say, hey, I'm working with a guy, Josh Wiles, and he's, you know, uh, was making great money in another company, lost his income. I met him. He had $800 to his name. $800. You took that $800, found 200 more invested in leads. We turned that $1,000 into $10,000. He wrote $23,000 his first week in a virtual world, $50,000 in two weeks, and over $103,000 his first 30 days in the business. And 90 days later, he's made over $100,000 deposit in his bank account. That's a story that brings me value. I just worked with Lady Laura Bailey Schwartz, just got started two weeks ago. We helped her write over $30,000 in business virtually her first week. Value. Another lady just got involved and she went over and wrote over $26,000. Value. So I'm creating stories. So my goal is how many stories and how fast can I create these stories? Because now you have value as an upline. You have value as a, um, you know, agency owner or an individual or an agent to bring to the, what, because everyone's tuned into that radio station, W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? right? Everyone's tuning into that station, right? So back to when you're brand new, first thing you gotta do is I was going to write something on the whiteboard, but I like kind of have this interaction here too. I'll put some stuff on here, but first thing you gotta do, number one, make a list. You have to make a list. I don't know why people are afraid of making a list. You got to make a list. Take that mental list and take, turn it into a pencil list. It may take you an hour to write down, write down every single person that you know. We're not going to try to recruit them all. Some of them you don't even want, but they all know people who know people that are going to be get involved in your business based upon you reaching out to them. Can I say something real quick on our, oh, yeah. in our summit, in our first phase of summit, uh, in our uh, recruiting one-on-one skills block, we actually have a, a short video, five minute video on uh, making a list. We provide you a template to do that. So just want to point to that resource as well. Yeah. So get a list, right? So the first thing you want to do is make a list, right? And, and put everyone here. This is an expression. The ones you think can, can't, and the ones you think can, can. The ones you think will, won't. And the people who you won't think won't, will. Right? And I told Marlon, he went three weeks in, where's your chicken list? And he goes, what's a chicken list? I said, all the people you're afraid to call because they're already successful. Those are the people I want to talk to. 
And that's how we found Michael Eidecker. That's how we found Derek Brock. Derek Brock, Marlon borrowed $300 off of Derek Brock to keep the lights on for his family during Christmas time when he wasn't even living with them. Now, if Marlon tried to tell Derek Brock about how incredibly op opportunity he has to offer him, why, oh, by the way, can you give me 300 bucks? Say, I don't have any money. Can I put, you know, pay my electric bill? How well would it be? But Derek, Marlon, I taught this to Marlon. He tossed Derek over the shoulder. I was on the phone with Derek. Matt and Brad were on the phone with Derek. So Derek wasn't looking necessarily at Marlon's success or lack there of it. He was looking at what the possibilities could be for him. And he's really close to going 120. You know? So Marlon was one of those first 10 people I sent a video to. So again, number one, make a list, right? And I'll share my screen in a minute too, right? The number two thing is always say, as I say, scale your list, okay? And what do I mean by that, right? And you got to be honest with yourself, Brian, when you scale your list, right? You have people in your warm market, people that you, you, you know and talk to, right? And you can see my screen okay? Is that right? Looks great. Yeah. Other, than so, the, uh, other than, you know, I see, I see why you didn't want to share your screen. That chicken scratch is looking really good. Now we got it. Make a list, scale. Yeah, that's awful. Awesome. That says going. scale. Just, it, just I, use, I your you. use your imagination. Maybe you can like te text what I'm supposed to be writing in the, in the, in the, in the chat box. Right? I got you. It's fine. So you're going to have people that you look up to, right? Or they think you should look up to. Your older brother and sister think you should look up to them. People that make more money, you think you should look up to them. People in an area of authority, doctors, attorneys, police officers, they think you should look up to them, right? People that, um, you know, you're going to have a lot more people that, they you look up to or people that think they should look up to then you're not right then you're gonna have people that you're equal to that are in your circle of influence right you make the same amount of money you drive similar cars you live in the similar neighborhoods um <clears throat> and, and you're, you've got the circle of influence that you have which are your peers and everything else and then you got people that look up to you i had very few of those when i started my first journey and building my first sales team but there are a lot of people who hold a lot of clout and there's people that look up to you so it's real simple. You just want to scale your list. So how are you going to approach it? Well, the number one thing is, I, I use this one a lot, almost on everybody, is I'm going to ask them for their opinion. It's really simple. Hey, Brian, listen, you know, I, out of all the people I know, you, you've obviously led a, teams of thousands of people and trained thousands of people. And I don't have a lot of those people in my life. Could you do me, you know, a favor? I, I need your opinion on something. I just got involved in the financial services company. I'm super excited about it. The one thing I know you're really good at is either finding ways I can help accelerate my growth in the company or pointing out some things I might be afraid of or to steer clear from. If I sent you over a, whatever video you're using, could you take 24 hours at, or could you take 20 minutes out of your day, take a look at it and give me your honest feedback and opinion? Now, how many of those people would say yes? Would you say yes to me, Brian, on that one? Happy to do it. Yes. Happy to do it. Great. This is kind of time sensitive for me, obviously, Brian. So if I sent it to you over today, would you have a chance to watch it in the next 24 to 40 hours? Or should I just wait a couple of weeks? Urgency, fear of loss. People want what they can't have. They move towards things that move away from them and they only value what they pay for in time or money. So if I know that I'm going to, I'm not desperate. Do I sound desperate? Do I sound like I'm attempting to recruit you? I'm just getting your opinion on something. And guess what? People that are successful have a great opinion of symmetry when they watch the video, what video you're using to be able to show them of the opportunity. I've never sat down with someone made over six figures and said, oh man, that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Really? A trillion dollar industry you have a chance to be part of, leads that people go out there and they're actually looking for your product and you get a chance to go out and help families and make a difference in the world. That's horrible. I would, this is, it, it, they don't. They all get it, right? So when I follow up with Brian, I say, listen, you have a chance to watch the next 20, 40, 40 hours. He goes, yeah, great. So today is Wednesday. The first time I have a chance to call you back would be Friday, morning, afternoon, evening, better for you. What's better for you, Brian? Yeah, Friday morning would be great. Okay, 10, 11, what's best for you? Remember, you're asking for your opinion, you're looking up to them, you're looking. Yeah, 10, okay, 11 o'clock. So if I call you at 11, were you sure you had a chance to watch it by then? I just increased my chance of watching it by 42%. Mm -hmm. Right there. That simple question. So when I call you at 11 o'clock on Friday, would you have, are you sure you have a chance to watch it by then? So now he's curious. He's interested. I sent him over the, uh, the video. I follow up 11 o'clock and I go, hey, Brian, did you, I really appreciate you doing this for me. Did you have a chance to watch this? And he's going to say yes or no. So do you have a chance to watch the video, Brian? I think you're texting. I think you're I, no, 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 no worries. Uh, no, I was just messaging someone back. Um, no, I didn't. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, uh, like I said, this is, um, this is super important. I know how busy you are. I really, really appreciate you having the chance to even do this for me. But <clears throat> do you think it, can you watch the next couple of days, or I just need to wait a couple of weeks? Yeah, I can. I can knock it out. Sorry about that. I was real busy. Okay, so he watches it. I call him back. Do you have a chance to watch the video, Brian? Yeah, I did. Great. What did you like most about what you saw? 
uh, I like the opportunity to build a business and um, the parts that talked about me being able to bring other people in and have that value and benefit. Um, I've never seen an opportunity like that. And I'm actually interested to learn more. I've wanted to learn more about that. So I'd love to dig into that. Cool. Don't, don't ask them what they think. That's the, the silliest question you could ever ask them. Like, what do you think? Oh, I think it's cool. What do you like most, right? What I like most about the policy. Now, here's the next two biggest questions I asked them. And I do this with every single war market. Now, Brian, I know how successful you are and everything else and, and you got going on in your life. Is this something you would ever and never? Wow, we can spend an hour on this. We got like nine minutes left. So we're only going to get, we're only going to scratch the surface, guys. But you, if you can just learn how to invite, for God's sake, that'll be able to help. How to invite the war market, right? Here, you're going to ask them for a favor using the same stuff. And here, you're basically going to tell them what to do. Hey, Brian, I got an opportunity for you. I think it's going to blow your mind. The other day when you're saying you hate your job, are you being serious or are you just kidding around? You're being serious, huh? I got something going to show you. I'm sending you over 20. So it's a different form. I'm, I can tell you what to do basically or guide you with what to do because you look up to me. Does that make sense, Brian? Very much so, yes. So is this something you would ever consider getting more information uh, on or looking deeper into or ever even consider maybe potentially doing something with it part-time or full-time? Or is this something that you're like, Nate, I would never do this. You know, God bless you. This is great. I love my job. I'm 100% happy. I have everything that I want. I have all the free time in the world. I'm just really happy where I'm at. I appreciate the opportunity. I'm not interested, but I can refer you to some people. I mean, where do you fall in between on that line, do you think, Brian? First of all, my jaw is falling on the floor at how good this information is, Nate. This is freaking phenomenal. And just that alone, not only just that diagram, the opinion, the favor, the tell, but this ever never thing. Oh my gosh, that is just so powerful to just open people up because I'm sitting here like, well, I don't have plans to think about it um, right now, but I could see a time in my life where I would consider it. But right now I'm very happy in my role as the chief leadership development officer of Quility. And I'm, I'm really not going anywhere now, but I can't say I would never uh, experience, you know, be, be interested in this down the road. So I love that. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. And if you're willing to help me refer some people then that, to me that you may think that have an opportunity, I'll work with them, I'll train them and I'll develop them. And if it becomes something where it potentially be profitable, I can give you a call back and show you how you could potentially profit from it. That sounds love fair, it. doesn't it? Love it. So here's what I want to look at, right? So, and okay. So now if I'm looking up to someone like Brian, I'm, and I know him really, really well, but like, as soon as that's done, I need to shut up and not puke and vomit all over them. Brian, really? Like, you think you might have an opportunity? Like, man, I'll tell you right now, man, this isn't crazy. Like, we're building an organization, and I can recruit you. You'll be under me, but not really under me. But, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, and we're going to build this, like, there are people making, like, a million dollars a day doing this. It's just insanity how much fast we're growing. And then Symmetry got this thing called a switchboard. Blah, and everyone starts throwing up on their, on their potential recruit. No, people want what they can't have. They move towards things that move away from them. They value what they pay for, time or money. So I'm just going to stop. If I haven't talked to this person, and people go, what if I haven't talked to someone for 10 years? I'll tell you, I just recruited a girl I haven't talked to for 15 years using the same thing. And as soon as she said, well, I'd be, look, I'd be, in, I'd, I'd look into it a little bit further. I go, awesome. So how are you doing? What's going on in your life? You want to build rapport, edify your expert. So I would immediately say, listen, if you wouldn't mind, it'd be great. I'd love to put you on the phone with my business partner, uh, Brad Smith. And again, we don't have time. I'd tell his story. Hopefully you have your upline story. And then I'm going to go back immediately into building rapport. I'm not going to say one other thing about the company, nothing else. So let's say I haven't talked to you for 15 years and I call you up, right? I go, Brian Williamson, how in the world are you doing, sir? It's a blast from the past. Let's say we work together. We're coworkers, right? Brian sure. Williamson, what's happening? Blast from the past. What's going on with your life right now? Man, couldn't be doing better. Family's thriving. Kids are doing great in college and you know and no, I, I, I would love to catch up with you man i'm super super busy i'm in a hurry i know it's been 15 years you're like why are you calling I'm calling you for a reason where are you living at right now still i live in michigan oh i was hoping you were going to say that I, I was hoping you still live in michigan i'm looking at your number here's why i'm calling you brian when we work together out of all the people edify them build them up for something you liked about them okay out of all people, you were always there early. You always showed, stayed late, and you were, went out of your way to help people. I maybe never told you that, but I really always admired that about you, Brian. How's he feel? Great. Here's why I'm calling you. We're running. We're, we, I'm with a financial services company. They're going through a record growth since COVID. Everything's done virtually. People are working from their homes. There's single moms that are at home making, you know, paying up, making more money than they are on a monthly basis. They had a full time job and they're able to stay with their family. And we're looking. We have more leads that are coming in in Michigan right now than we have agents that can help support the families that need protected. Now, I don't know if you'd have an interest or not. I'm sure knowing you, you probably own the world now. You have your dream job. You're living the life of, you know, 
who know i'd love to catch up and find that out but here's what i know quality people hang around quality people and we're not finding the quality people we're looking for by running all these ads and career builder and linkedin and all these we're just not finding those quality people so i was wondering if you could do me a favor and help me out if i sent you over a 20 minute video explaining the company who we are and what we're doing would you take 20 to 20 minutes out of your day take a look at it and give me your honest feedback opinion and happen to know let me know a maybe you have an interest or b if you happen to know somebody who's looking for part-time income or even a potential career change. Could you do that favor for me? I'd be happy to do that. So how do you feel? Do you feel recruited? Uh, if you, you feel uh, recruited, if, if I, I would, if you switch, if you switch the script that quickly, like if you called me and I started talking and I know we're role-playing, but if, if pretty soon you're like, Hey, Hey, I don't have a lot of time. I'd be like, my radar would be going off. So I'm going to well, challenge. No, I wouldn't have done that, but we have, it's 1156. So you're That's right. Fine. So I apologize. Right, yeah. no, I, no, no, I would no. actually call you up and say, Hey, Brian, how you, I'm not going to spend a lot of time rebuilding rapport though. There's a, there's a, I'm going to build enough rapport to yeah. just catch up, but I'm not going to go into deep rapport because here's what happens. Imagine we spend 15 minutes catching up the whole thing in the back of your head. You're thinking, why is Nate calling? me? I haven't talked to this guy for 15 years. Right. And all of a sudden I go, Oh, and by the way, Brian, and you're like, Oh boy, here it comes. Right. So picking up that phone and being intentional, letting them know that you're I'm calling you for a reason. I'd love to catch up with you. Right. There's an art to doing that. Not too soon, but not too fast. So, yes, you're right. But other than that, in the scripting, the words, do you feel like I'm recruited? Or do you actually kind of feel like, oh. wow, Nate thinks I'm an awesome guy? No, not at all. And I'm, I'm grateful for you clarifying that. And I was partially playing devil's advocate because actually oh. that was really helpful for people to to be able to hear um, when you when you kind of make it into a recruiting pitch people will pick that up, but to actually do it more naturally, that's what we're looking for, right? Ways to do that. So, yeah. And that's, and I, I can do it. Someone I haven't talked to 10 years, 15 years, whatever the case may be. So, you know, now you feel like, wow, Nate thinks highly about me. You're curious what's going on. And I use the same process. I'm going to send you over the video. What do you like most about what you've seen? Is this something you would ever consider getting more information on looking into it or potentially even possibly doing, or is this something when they, like, I would never do this because I ever and that. never are very strong words. Very few people that. say never. And if they don't say never, I can put them on the phone with my business partners, my upline to talk further in detail about it. So, and then again, so if you say, Hey, I, this is something I'd look into. I mean, I'm pretty happy with what I'm doing right now, but you know, always, I'm always, I'm an open-minded guy. I'd say, listen, I'd love to get you on the phone with my business partner, um, Brad Smith. I would tell his story, edify him. And then I would just turn around and say, so Brian, how have you been, man? What are you up to? What are you doing these days? And I'm going to spend time digging rapport. Why am I building rapport? Well, number one is I want to catch up with his life. I'd actually probably would, if you're a good person, you actually care about what's going on in people's lives. But number two, the real reason is I'm going to find out what areas of his life is he dissatisfied with that symmetry could solve. I'm not going to ask him that question, but I hear him talking, right? I'm going to lead him down questions to find out what area in his life does Brian have right now, Brian Williamson, that symmetry could solve so that when I put him on the phone with my upline, I can tailor fit a presentation to him based upon what he's dissatisfied with in his life. So if he goes, well, man, we're making really good money. I got four kids. I said, oh, that's awesome, right? So like you coaching the basketball team and the football team, like how involved? Yeah, well, that's a little tough because I'm working, you know, I travel a lot. I have an hour, boom, dissatisfied. He's not going to come out and say, well, I really hate this. Or he might, right? But I can very easily start picking those things. What is he dissatisfied with? And then I can go, hey, Brad, look, he, he makes great money. He travels three, four days a week, barely sees his kids, right? You know, he's and then boom, boom, boom. And then when Brad's doing it, he's not going to say, hey, Brian, so the one really good thing about symmetry is you can see your, he's going to tailor fit it in the presentation. And those are going to be the hot buttons that he can be talking about that could get Brian more attracted to symmetry and stuff. Guys, all we're doing is sorting, not selling. Sort, don't sell. Mm -hmm. I don't really care whether or not someone does it or not. I'm going to sort or sell. You're going to find out. I want to expose them. You always have, you know, you have the red apples in your warm market. You have the green apples, which are ripe, not ready to eat. And then you have the rotten apples. I love when someone goes, well, I have my uncle and he hates insurance. This is the stupidest thing in the world. But he'd be really good at it. Can you talk to him for me? No. <laughs> no, no, no. He's a rotten apple and rotten apples hang out with rotten apples. I'm not talking to your uncle who hates insurance. Why would you even want him in your business? But, you know, but the green apple, like, I talked to Bryce Ball, and I'm going to end here right now. i got one minute. I talked to Bryce Ball, who found Ron Williams. Ron Williams came in, was the first person to get started my business with Marlin, and he had an opportunity to move to Kansas. We didn't do leads in Kansas. He was selected to build a, a company with his buddy. He was promised ownership. Three years later, I get a phone call and said, hey, my business partner basically is excommunicating me from the company I built. We were, they were the number one fastest growing company in Kansas. 
in three years. I go, well, it's only like two companies there, but congratulations, right? Give them a little hard time. But then I found out they were 79th fastest growing company on Inc. 5000's list, magazine's list. And he pulled a fast one on them and said, you need to sign this slip and exit from the company or I'm not going to pay you $200,000 at you. And I said, well, hey, man, because I know something similar happened to you. I said, come bring the family out, bring your wife, Chin, bring the kids, we'll hang out. So he came out, he brought his wife, my wife hung out with his wife and the kids hung out and I put his butt in a car and started driving around to do appointments, right? <clears throat> that was, took three years. And now he's, he's months away from hitting a, a equity partner, 120. Gus Villagran, same thing as business crash. So Ron was a green apple, but he knew about it. Mm-hmm. Now Ron had somebody just call him Shannon Proper's organization that he first called about this three or four years ago. So the thing is, I just want to contact because Shannon called Brian goes, I don't remember, but I, I just saw an ad. On, I'm looking, I have a license insurance license. I thought about using it and I can't remember the name of your company, but I answered an ad for some company called Symmetry. And she goes, he goes, yeah, that's who I work with. But since he talked to her, she remembered that, right? So it's like, I almost want to ex- tell everyone I know about the opportunity just so someone else doesn't recruit them. Because it's going to be a time and place. It happens there, but you're going to walk to a conference and there's your best friend from high school and someone else's team. And your stomach, your stomach is going to go down into your, you know, your heart's going to drop into your stomach and that feeling is going to, you know, the hair on the leaderboards every day and hear them on the week. And you can be happy for them, but you know, down deep inside, go, man, why did I not pick up the phone and call them? Why did I not at least let them know what I was doing? And then I'll end with this. I had a vision. I went to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I had a vision coming out of a meeting that we were in, Matt, Brad, myself. And, and, and I know it sounds weird, but it was, I literally had this commercial run through my head within like three seconds that this told the story. I walk out and there's Marlon Faulkner, because that's where I knew him from Tulsa, sitting in the booth. And he walks up to me. I'm getting chills even thinking about this. this I saw. He walks up to me, he goes, man, Nate. I go, Marlon, how you doing? He's like, what's going on? I'm like, oh my gosh, you have no idea. I found this opportunity. Blew me out of the water. You know, it helped me create a, a million dollar a year passive income in less than four years. I mean, I've been traveling the world. I never even went to Disney World when I was little. I've been on more vacations this year than I have than most people do in their entire life, all paid by, and I'm going on and on and on and on. And I go, how are you doing? Well, you know, Heather and I got divorced, right? You know, hey, let's go outside. Let's have a smoke real quick. So he pulls me outside, sitting there smoking a cigarette, and he's telling me his life story. He's still bouncing at the club. He's divorced. He's financially broke. And he turned to me, Brian, in, the, in that quick vision real quick, and he turned to me and he goes, I just have one question. I go, what's that, Marlon? He goes, why didn't you ever tell me about it? Mm-hmm. And how do you answer that question? Look at Marlon's life today. He inspires hundreds, if not thousands of people. And it's only because I picked up the phone and gave him an opportunity. And he grabbed a hold of it. I don't want to answer that question to anyone, Brian, that turns around to me and goes, why didn't you tell me about it? You didn't think I was good enough? You didn't think I would do it? And so I'll end with that. Great. Man, my, my phone's blown up. The chat's blown up. Uh, the only request is for more Nate time. So we'll circle back with you. And I'm sure that'll happen at your, uh, at your discretion, of course. But what great deposits. I, I mean, just even thinking about how people confuse their burnt market with their warm market, right? Sometimes we don't even approach people because we think they're burnt and maybe they're not. And uh, I just love the whole way through. Just made great deposits and uh, super grateful for you, Nate. Thanks so much. Thank you for having um, me on. I appreciate it. I'll be more than happy to do it anytime you want. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. As a well, symmetry, welcome. man, we are, we are, we are, oof, we're about to yeah. explode. I am so freaking excited about where we're going right now. So excited. It is getting crazy. So super grateful. Spivey, you with us, man? You can unveil. And Ian Graham, you can unveil too. I know, Todd, you are. Why don't you tell everybody, oh, uh, you got some background noise because you're in business mode. Where are you at, brother? Yeah, we're sitting here in Dallas at the spring tour, getting ready to kick off here in just a few hours. Outstanding. Um, yeah, super, uh, super glad you're popping on safe. Uh, whoops, that didn't work. Um, safe, uh, safe travels to uh, Dallas and uh, you're going to be spending the day with some of our amazing folks out there, right? Man, absolutely. Can you hear me? Okay. Is that better now? Uh, yeah, yeah, we got you. Yeah, there's a little background noise. It just shows you're in the midst of the hustle and bustle though. <laughs> right outside the, the lobby here, hanging out with Rummy. They're getting the room set up and, uh, just fired up to be here, expecting a crowd over 500 and and probably more. So they're having to rearrange the chairs right now to get in more space. So we great. couldn't be more fired up. Already had some great association. Uh, probably ran into at least six directs 
to the company already down the lobby and uh, just super fired up. Never hurts. Speaking of Nate down there, great job, buddy, by the way. But as soon as I walked in the, the, the doors there, first person I see is Marlon Faulkner. Nice. You never miss that laugh. You know, instantly he's in the building. Uh, so good to see him out here. Yeah. Yeah, that is funny. I was looking at my son's uh, yearbook last night. Um, he's graduating. It's his last week here. And uh, he he got voted, uh, or uh, what is it, the, the heartbreaker or whatever. Um, it was like, who, who was the class heartbreaker? But then next to it was uh, the students with the best laugh. And, uh, you know, I think about Marlon, he'd probably be up in the running for the best laugh in symmetry, don't you think? For uh, male, we got male and female, of course, uh, categories. He, he'd be up there, wouldn't he? Oh, absolutely. Uh, just the way he makes you feel with that laugh and uh, yeah. sincerity behind the hugs that he gives, man, special individual yeah. and forever grateful for, for Nate Alford and what his team brings, the leadership, the training, and also, of course, bringing to us so many wonderful leaders that are coming up. And you talk about a team that's on the move. Uh, Brandon Ellison talks a lot about Nate Alford and the way his team's direction is going right now. And sure. uh, we're all fired up for you, Nate. Yep. No doubt. And another man on the move with, uh, man, three recently promoted folks is Mr. Ian Graham. So, Ian, you're up to deck in a little bit here after we watch our video and get through our leaderboards. And you're going to talk about the power of cross-line collaboration. Give us a, a sneak peek, a little, uh, give us a Twitter highlight before we watch our video here. What are you going to be focused on with these amazing leaders? Yeah, absolutely, Brian. I appreciate that. Um, and and the power of cross-line collaboration, you saw their pictures there, Misty and Marin. Uh, Brian, they both started about 12 months ago here. Um, two very different cities. They, they, they didn't know each other before Symmetry, um, formed a great working relationship cross-line, and they both hit AO the same month last month um, in their 12th month here. So we're going to hear how they did it and how uh, and, and, and do our best at empowering all of you out there listening on how you can also do the same. Outstanding. Well, we're looking forward to it and uh, grateful for your intentionality as a leader and for the way that you, uh, you've uh, done such a, uh, made, made great investments and uh, you're reaping the rewards of that. So good stuff. But before we kick off, we have a video. So we're going to all veil and mute and we're going to watch this video as we launch.